This training video is a capture of an interactive online training module. While this training video provides you with valuable content, the optimal experience can only be had by navigating to the Extreme Networks website and accessing this interactive training through our educational services portal. In Module 1, we will lay the foundation for scripting within the Extreme XOS operating system. Module 1 is going to discuss how to enable, disable, work with, and create scripts within the XOS platform. Module 1 is going to cover enabling and disabling CLI scripting, configuring scripting, working with variables, metadata, and at the end we'll have a short video demonstration as to the power of Extreme XOS scripting. Configuring Extreme XOS scripting. Okay, enabling scripting. You have a few commands here. You have enable CLI scripting, enable CLI scripting permanent, and enable CLI scripting output. Let's go over those for a second. First, you'll see an image down there that says Enable CLI Scripting, and then it has Output and Permanent. That's to show off what it looks like in the CLI. Enable CLI Scripting. This is session-based. So when you enable CLI Scripting, it's only for that session, whichever session you're in. If you set Enable CLI Scripting Permanent, that means it will be active for all sessions post that session. And Enable CLI Scripting Output, as of 12, Exos 12.1.2, and higher, the default output was to not show on the CLI scripting output. So, if you want to actually see the output, and there are some cases in which you might, debugging or when you're using static scripts for reducing keystrokes when you're doing day-to-day -day commands, those are the kind of things where you might want to see the output. So remember that that command is there. Now we're looking at the opposite of the last slide's command. Disable CLI scripting, disable CLI scripting permanent, and disable CLI scripting output. Disable CLI scripting, again, is session-based. You can disable it for the current session you're in, just as quickly as you enabled it. Disable CLI scripting permanent disables it for all sessions, switch wide. And disable CLI scripting output disables the CLI scripting output. So there are some examples of how you would want to use Disable CLI scripting output. There are, could be portions of your script you would want to see and portions that you don't want to see. In a script that you create to enhance day-to-day -day operations at the CLI, there are, could be the first five lines of the script you want to see, and then you want to disable the rest of the CLI output. So Disable CLI scripting output you would use in concert with Enable CLI scripting output to section off certain portions of a script you would want to see. Configuring the CLI mode provides two options. You can abort on error or ignore error. Abort on error simply states if I see an error when I am executing to abort and ignore error is the same. If I see an error, continue to execute to the best of the script's ability. The default behaviors at a CLI are to ignore an error and within a UPM or a dynamic script it aborts on errors. We also have Enable CLI Scripting Output listed again with the default behaviors. During an interactive session, scripting output is enabled. If you enter in scripted commands at the CLI, they do work. This will have output enabled. During the load script command, where you are load script name of script.xsf, the output is default disabled. You have to enable the scripting output for the session at the CLI or enable scripting output within the script itself. Persistent mode or non-persistent mode? Configure CLI mode persistent or non-persistent. Determines if entered commands are saved to the switch configuration that persists on a switch reboot. The default behavior is non-persistent, which means if you enter in a command without saving the configuration during a reboot, those changes that you made to the switch will not persist with a the reboot. They won't be there. It affects only non-persistent capable commands. In the next set of slides, including this one, we have a list of the non-persistent capable commands. 
some more non-persistent commands. Unless explicitly preceded with the command configure CLI mode persistent, all non-persistent capable commands operate in a non-persistent mode when operating in dynamic profiles. What does that mean? It means in a universal port, if you execute commands, they will be in the non-persistent mode unless you explicitly precede the commands with configure CLI mode persistent. So a universal port operates in non-persistent mode by default. Secondarily, unless explicitly preceded with the command configure CLI mode non-persistent, all non-persistent capable commands operate in a persistent mode when operating in CLI and CLI launched scripts. So if you do load script, script changes, dot XSF, enter, and they're non-persistent commands, they will operate in persistent mode, meaning your changes are immediate and immediately saved to the configuration file. Working with extreme XOS scripts. When dealing with extreme XOS scripting, there will come an occasion when you have to use the VI editor or the visual editor in the extreme XOS operating system. It's pretty much a rule among VI users that you're not really effective until you learn about 20 to 21 commands in VI. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Here are a few of the key commands that I use that help my VI experience be more effective. Now there are two modes. There's the edit mode that you need to press the escape key to get out of, and there's the no escape key required mode, which you begin when you enter into the VI. Pressing the lowercase i will enter insert mode and starts from wherever the cursor is at. Pressing the uppercase I, so shift I, will enter in insert mode and start from the beginning of the current line. This can speed you back to the beginning of the line if you're off on another portion of the text. Pressing lowercase A will append after the cursor. Pressing the lowercase O will open a new line of text below the current line. So if you're escaped out and you're moving up and down and you want to insert a piece of code or a line, Below the current line you're on, all you have to do is hit the lowercase o, it'll move you down to the beginning of the line and start the new line. Pressing the uppercase o when you're escaped out and not in the insert mode or edit mode will open a new line of text above the current line. Then if you are escaped out and not in an edit mode, pressing the r followed by a character will replace a single character. And pressing the x will delete a single character from under the cursor. There are some limitations with the Extreme XOS implemented visual editor. It doesn't support all the common VI commands. It just supports most of them. It does not support the bang command to execute a child process and capture its output. This is done for security reasons. It also lacks a normal VI crash recovery feature. This is also for security reasons and for process reasons. It always assumes a VT102 type terminal emulator. There's no set preferences function available to a visual editor user. Only whole line undo and no last change undo are supported. So only the uppercase U and lowercase U for undo is supported. Search is done case insensitive. EX commands are not supported. And command counts need to prefix a command and a command count for A, C, D, I, R, Y, and several other commands are not supported. This is also for security reasons. Editing and working with scripts from a Windows workstation. Internally, most of our script writing community uses an open source tool that can be found in the link posted above called Notepad++. It's Notepad with a little bit of extra functionality. There is a custom Extreme XOS markup for Notepad++ that will be posted to the community site uh, at EtherNation and can be found for Extreme Networks employees on the internal wiki. Works with most versions of Windows and you can customize your own markup even further. 